For as random as these dreams appear, it proves that something is in his head. Yeah, it's called thoughts, emotions. It's called shock, terror, pain, whatever's on his face here, you can pick that. They're dreams. The kid's on fire. The kid's not on fire. Ooh, it's interpretive. That's what dreams are kind of all about. It's not mind control, at least not in the way the lore has described how Reaper mind control works. Just let the dreams be dreams. Interpret all the subjective emotions you want based on the value of what you think they are. You're free to do that. And if you seriously think the writers are this clever, you are not only out to lunch, you are working at the diner. It knows that this shape of a hoodie wearing hoodlum is important to him. This is the third time the author has shot himself in the foot. Once again, if Star Child is a real thing, then this whole scene and the ending itself is not a hallucination. It's because our favorite neighborhood scamp hoodie, well, he's never existed in the first place. He's a construct implanted into Shepard's mind. By virtue of us having a third person camera angle, an omniscient perspective, we can see Shepard in that shot. And we can see the kid in the shot. If it's not an omniscient perspective, then everything can be scrutinized to be a hallucination and nothing is real or believable. The evidence is subtle at first, but undeniable once you start looking for it. That only proves you're delusional, that you need to rationalize everything under that delusion and can't think critically when the evidence contradicts you. Have you ever thought you may in fact be wrong? That what you're describing is not a house of cards, but that you're burning a pile of cards that have now become kindling. One, nobody, nobody at all in the entire game sees or acknowledges this child. They don't need to. The audience, with a third person omniscient view, can see him. That is called an objective view. Mass Effect has always done this. The child is casting a shadow. He's interacting with the physical world. We can hear him speak. He makes noise. He's a physical entity. Mass Effect is not using a first person shooter perspective. It has a cinematic third-person view. If you don't know what that is, I suggest you read a book or watch a movie, and then take the book or movie and slam it into your face. As you repeatedly do that, you will notice the object is physical, it makes noise, and it hurts. Much like your thought process to the rest of humanity, with a thinking brain. Getting on the rescue ship, these soldiers help everyone else into the shuttle, and look at how they don't help that kid. Either these soldiers have never heard of women and children first, or they're not helping because there's nobody actually there to help. Yeah, by shooting enemies to ensure everyone gets away, and not help an able-bodied child from walking. How dare those soldiers do their job protecting people? Seriously, if you think this is all some M. Night Jambalaya cinematic, you are not only out to lunch, you got rushed to the hospital after eating so much, and they have to give you a slow drip of the Kool-Aid in hopes that they can then eventually wean you off or else you'll die. Consider this. During the air duct scene, your mentor Admiral Anderson calls the Shepard, and when you look back, poof, the kid has disappeared. After the scared child has said to Shepard, you can't help me, six seconds have passed from the last view of the child on the screen. A child who's scared for their life, who doesn't want to go with someone for fear of death, keeps crawling into the air duct they were already going into. Apparently this scene is so hard to understand it must be a complete hallucination. As at that instant, a reaper nearby lets out a loud screech. They do it all throughout Mass Effect 3. It's not a big deal, it's kind of silly, but that's just their thing. Ooh, noise is scary. Additionally, supplemental material is not effective in explaining another medium, especially when using a different writer, but eh, now we're hearing voices to explain mind control when we've already established mind control has no noise in the audible spectrum. Eh. It would seem as though Shepard was falling under the thrall of the Reapers, but was temporarily snapped out of it by Anderson. Or it's just called cinematics. And it doesn't take that long for a kid to crawl half a meter around a right angle air duct out of the frame. This is also assuming all the cuts between the scenes were in fact eight seconds and the time between those scenes weren't longer. Yes, the magic of cinema. This is similar to the frames of a comic. You have to fill in the blanks between them. Now, I don't think that's what's going on here, but it's much more feasible to argue this framing context than it is to explain mind control by trying to view the content with false lore. 
All because it seemed like the kid pulled the Batman? A tone from space, it forced the singers to resonate with its own sour yellow note. A sour tone that prompted them to have dark dreams featuring, quote, Songs the color of oily shadows. First off, the Rachni Queen is one of the more alien species of Mass Effect, and who controls telepathy via colored thoughts. I don't know exactly what those are. That's what makes her Rachni. Thus, we don't know how she communicates our senses the physical world. Secondly, there is no sound in space, so we don't know what she's talking about here. Thirdly, songs come from sound, and thus do not have colors, oily shadows or watery light or whatever, unless you have a condition called synesthesia. Again, we're talking to an alien about their understanding of another alien and how their mind control is causing a tone from space. Fourthly, the other Rachni singers were making sour yellow notes. What does that even mean? Notes, notes that, as we learn in ME1, cause dreams with oily black shadows. Shadows just like the ones that are appearing in Shepard's nightmare. Let's see the actual conversation. This is a question we asked the Queen about what will happen if we let her go. You have the power to free us, or return our people to the silence of memory. If I let you live, would you attack other races again? No. We... I... do not know what happened in the war. We only heard discordance, songs the color of oily shadows. We would seek a hidden place to teach our children harmony. If they understand, perhaps we would return. Are you a survivor from the war? A clone? We do not know. We were only an egg, hearing mother cry in our dreams. A tone from space hushed one voice after another. It forced the singers to resonate with its own sour yellow note. Then we awoke in this place, the last echo of those who came out from the singing planet. The sky is silent. Now, we do know the Reapers were controlling the Rachni during the Rachni Wars, but this doesn't mean anything. She just heard songs the color of oily shadows. That doesn't mean she heard them from the Reaper-controlled Rachni. She could be referring to being confused, since this she was an egg at the time being told these things by her mother. Because she literally said, I do not know what happened in the war. We only heard discordance, songs the color of oily shadows. That could be her alien way of trying to translate that those who weren't indoctrinated, those she could communicate with, communicated via songs the color of oily shadows, which could mean discordance, or confusion, or ignorance, or maybe even fear. But let's imagine it was Reaper Rachni communicating this way. Why would a human mind have songs the color of oily shadows, whatever that is? It sounds like they're communicating through sound, not necessarily dreaming, unless that's how their telepathy works. And if they are dreaming, or being telepathic, who's to say a human mind would have the same kind of dreams or thoughts, considering we're not telepathic? See how this is all one wild speculation, all because some animator decided to make dreamlike shadowy figures in a dream world, and the fans are still clutching onto that buyer's remorse? Sure, it could just be a huge coincidence that the first time Shepard sees the child, the day all these dreams are triggered, dreams that reflect the style of dreams other indoctrinated species have had, just so happens to be the very first day that the Reapers show up. The mind of an alien and the mind of a human are decidedly different. Also, the author is supposing that just because they show up, we have indoctrination. That's not the case. If that were the case, Shepard would have been indoctrinated as soon as we saw Sovereign back on Eden Prime. Yeah, it could be, but it's not. And science proves why. Oh God. Enough volumes have been shown in study after study to negatively impact humans, from giving them simple headaches, to full-blown anxiety attacks, to even seeing ghosts. So you're saying the negative stimuli has a negative impact on the human body. Thank you, science man. Then the author goes, into pure nonsense about spectral analysis having ones and zeros, brought to you by the colors red and yellow, and thus, I don't know, it's not even worth responding to. Because now it's time to tackle the ending. And here we 
Except he doesn't, and he says more Mass Effect is coming, but that was a month ago. And then he wants to sell you some razor blades so you can shave, I hope. So maybe he's eventually going to prove the indoctrination theory. I wish I could see it. I, I guess I'll have to check my uh, spectral analysis of that. Oh, oh yeah, right. Sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you. Getting a lot of... With all fan theories, they're generally stupid, but at best entertaining. Unfortunately, this one is dead in the water. I will interface with your systems and assist with the catalyst too. Indoctrinated presence detected. Activating security protocol. We literally have an indoctrination detection tool in the name of the Prothean AI Vendetta. That means anyone who has said anything about the indoctrination theory prior to these events are categorically wrong. Additionally, the way that indoctrination works, there is no time in the story to prove that Commander Shepard is going to be indoctrinated during this length of time until the ending. 